forward. The purpose of this book is to share with my many friends throughout the world knowledge gained through personal experiences during the years since Inside the Space Ships was published in 1955. I wish to express deep appreciation to my devoted colleagues and friends from this world and other planets who have assisted me in preparing the material contained herein. George Adamski Introduction For 13 years, I have pursued the elusive flying saucers, investigating every available fact in an attempt to solve the many questions created by their presence. Now, many of the riddles have been solved on the basis of scientific proof, and I am firmly convinced that men from other planets have arrived on Earth. In this conviction, I am not alone. Many scientists and government officials now admit their belief that people from other planets in our solar system have come to Earth and that flying saucers are spacecraft of extraterrestrial origin. In 1957, I first met George Adamski, a space lecturer philosopher who, with the British writer Desmond Leslie, co-authored Flying Saucers Have Landed, one of the most informative documents to be published on spacecraft and their origin. Adamski's startling account of his meeting with a man from Venus met with tremendous response from readers throughout the world. Since my first meeting with George Adamski, we have worked together on an extensive study of what some officials prefer to call unidentified flying objects. My interest in UFOs actually began many years ago in Boise, Idaho, where I lived at the time of Kenneth Arnold's first report in 1947. In those days, I worked as a radio repairman for an auto electric shop and had serviced the radios in Arnold's private plane and automobile. Arnold visited the shop shortly after the Mount Rainier incident when he sighted a formation of UFOs, and I was very impressed with his story. I knew Arnold to be a sober individual and had no reason to doubt his experience. I maintained this interest for several years afterward. In the summer of 1951, I moved to Seattle, Washington, where I read occasional UFO reports in the newspapers, most of them tongue-in-cheek accounts which hinted that hallucinations or perhaps crackpots might be behind the flying saucer stories. Then I bought a pocketbook entitled Flying Saucers Are Real by Donald E. Kehoe. This book convinced me that saucers were indeed real and were of interplanetary origin. I began to purchase every UFO book I could get my hands on as fast as it was released to the public. All contact claims I dismissed as pure fantasy, written by willful hoaxers or by sincere, though deluded, people. One morning, I read an advertisement in the Seattle Post-Intelligencer requesting that persons interested in UFOs contact Robert J. Gribble of the Civilian Flying Saucer Intelligence. This group later changed its name to Aerial Phenomena Research Group. I contacted Gribble and joined his organization. A few months later, Gribble invited me to become an associate director in the group and to participate more actively in its UFO research program. This I did and got in on the ground floor, so to speak, of what I consider to be the best and most scientific investigation agency in the UFO field. Each month, Clippings would pour in from every major newspaper in the world. Gribble maintained large maps pinpointing all the major sightings and landings in the world. Separate maps were used for other incidents connected with the UFOs. In July of 1957, I moved to Southern California. At this time, a new opportunity presented itself. I was very close to the majority of the so-called contactees. Some months previously, I had come to the realization that contacts of some kind must have been made. If the situation were reversed and our ships were flying around another planet for several years, they would certainly, in that length of time, try to land and contact some of the natives. If we landed and accidentally ran across an inhabitant, no matter what his station in life might be, we would certainly attempt some sort of communication. The space people would be no different from us in that respect. In 